Let's do that. So what I have here is a wall. We're going to move a little bit away from the swing set and we're going to draw um, a spring. And right here, I'm going to draw a mass. So this is a mass. This could be lead or wood or whatever. It could be whatever, but it has a certain mass here. Okay, so I'm going to put, you know, M, mass M. And this spring has a certain stiffness. We'll talk about it later, but basically has a stiffness to it. And, and here we are. Now, let's say this is the rest position. Let's say I have a wall and it, the spring is attached to a mass and that spring, you know, has a natural place that it sort of likes to settle. If you just let it go, that's called the rest position. So that is exactly what this is. So we're going to just kind of draw a dotted line here, down and down here, and we'll say that this is, we'll call this the rest position, right? So this is the middle. I haven't done anything to it yet. Now let's say I take the spring and I grab it and I stretch him out, let's say to here, and then I let him go. What do you think is going to happen? Well, I pull him, I let him go, he's going to fly over here, the spring is going to get compressed, right? And then he's going to turn around and fly this way, and he's going to get stretched, and he's just going to keep doing that because when I compress the spring, the spring's going to push back. And then when he finally gets here, I've stretched the spring, so the spring also pulls back. So if the spring system has no losses, in real life you do have losses and everything slows down, but if you had no losses, then this thing would just keep oscillating forever and ever and ever, and we call it simple harmonic motion. So let's say that I did pull it back, and I pull it back to here, right? So let me do my best. Let me draw this wall down here. So once I pull him back, the spring is stretched, Okay, there, and I have the guy here, and I let him go. He's going to fly through here, and then he's going to go, and he's going to be compressed. Let's say he gets all the way to here, and the spring is incredibly compressed right here up against the wall. So I've tried to draw that symmetric. I may not have succeeded. This distance here it should be exactly the same as this distance right here because the mass, I think maybe I need to move it a little bit closer, more like maybe like this, just to make it clear. This mass should, be, should have the same distance on this side of the rest position as it does on this side of the rest position. Okay, so let me put this here. All right, now why do we draw this? Because, okay, this distance from right here to the rest position is called the amplitude. Right? It's exactly the same distances from here to here because it's all symmetrical, right? So I could have easily drawn an arrow from here to here and said this is the amplitude. This distance is in meters. I can actually measure it with a ruler and I would say, in real life, I would say the uh, amplitude of this spring system is 0 0.5 meters or whatever. I would say 0 0.25 meters. It would be a number. That would be the amplitude. When you tell somebody that, they would know right away that's the maximum distance that that thing moves past the rest position. Okay, now while I have this drawing up here, I mainly drew it to show you what the amplitude really, uh, really look like. But while I have it up here, I want to take the time to draw something else. Let me ask you a question here, right? What, what do you think the speed of this, uh, this guy is going to be right here? And what do you think the speed of this guy is going to be right here? Well, I pull it back. Let's say he starts oscillating. He gets compressed here, stretched here, compressed here, and stretched here. Do you think, what do you think the speed is going to be right here and right here? This, where I've drawn it, is the exact moment that that thing slows down and turns around. So what do you think the speed is going to be right at that point at which he turns around? The speed at those points on both sides where he turns around is going to be zero. Literally zero. Because even if you think about the swing set, if you push someone, they go up, 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 and there's a moment of weightlessness right at the top where you just turn around, you get the butterflies in your stomach. That's because you're not moving at all right there, but then gravity pulls you right back down and you start moving again. So right here, you're moving the slowest. And literally, you're moving at zero right at the end. Here, you're also moving at the slowest because you're literally turning around about to go back the other way. Now, what do you think the relative speed here is right in the center here? Just think that. Think about that for a second. I've turned around, the spring is fully extended, and it's pulling me as hard as it can pull me, and I start to speed up right through the center line here. What do you think my relative speed is there? Well, at the midpoint there, you're going to be going the fastest in this motion here. And it's exactly like the swing set when you think about it. You sit down, someone pulls you back, lets you go. 
and then let's say that you don't have any losses and you keep going. At the moment you turn around on both sides, you're not moving at all. At that instant in time, right when you turn around, you're not moving, but then you start speeding up. As you go down to the bottom of the swing, as you pull through that, that, that uh, rest position right in the center, you're moving the fastest right there. Every point beyond that point, you're slowing down as you reach the top of the next hill. So right here, you're moving the fastest. All right. I want you to try to keep that in your head because it really helps. We're going to be doing a lot of things with springs, uh, and it's going to also help when we get into you know, uh, uh, sound waves and other things to, to visualize what's really happening here. Because a lot of times you can think of air molecules with the forces between the air molecules. You can kind of think of them as having a little spring between them, even though there really is no spring there. It's useful to think about that. So this is a graphical picture of what... Um, of what, the, uh, of what simple harmonic motion is. So you see, I wanna show this as, a, as kind of a bragging point here. Something as complicated as simple harmonic motion, which sounds really, really complicated, is nothing more than something you played with all your life. Something attached to a spring and the thing moving back and forth or a swing set, right? So what I wanna do next is I wanna graph this. This is just a picture showing you what's happening. But what we want to get in the habit of doing is actually graphing it, showing what the distance looks like as a function of time. Because we know we pull the spring back, we let it go, and we start a stopwatch. Well, that thing's going to be moving back and forth as time goes on. The position of that mass will be different places because it's moving back and forth. We want to plot that because that will be um, basically how we are able to look at this simple harmonic motion. Okay, so what we want to do is switch gears a little bit and say draw a little a little um, x y axis here so over here is time okay and over here along this axis is displacement in other words how far from the rest position how far away from the rest position have you have you made it so let's say you pull the spring back and you let go. So you start, you start the graph at the moment you let go. So you've pulled back to the maximum position that you ever planned to be. So you're going to start off being relatively high. This is the distance in meters away from the rest position. So at time zero, right when you let go, I'm the farthest away. Okay. Now I let go and I travel and I, I, I get over here to the, uh, the center, to the rest position. And then I go through that position and I make it all the way over here, uh, in which case I basically turn around again. So what your motion's really gonna look like, just like I told you in the beginning, is a cosine. That is a, that is a cosine. It goes on and on forever. I mean, you could continue drawing it because if you plot a cosine, you'll see it goes on forever. And of course, if there's no friction here, this motion will go on forever. So it matches a cosine. Cosine always starts at the top, like this, and it goes down and up and down and up. It starts at the maximum displacement here, let's say I pulled it back by whatever. If I wanted to put some, <clears throat> some numbers into this, I could say, well, I pulled it back by 0 0.5 meters. I pulled it back 0.5 meters. That was the top thing. It goes through zero because this is, this is a, uh, uh, the distance from the rest position. As it makes it through this point, we cross down through here and we go negative. The reason we go negative is because this is defined as the zero position, one side of that position is going to be defined to be positive, the other side is going to be defined to be negative. So if this is my reference point, these, let's just say, are positive, and this, anything on this side is going to be called negative. So we go negative, but then we turn around, we go back through the rest position here, and then we get back exactly where we started over here. And then it just keeps going over and over and over. Now the reason I'm really drawing this is because the period, if you remember, which is over here, the period um, is the time in seconds it takes for one oscillation. So one oscillation starts up here and exactly where you end up, which is right here. So this from here to here is a period. It's a period because that's one complete oscillation. That's one complete back and forth. I started over here on the left and I ended up exactly where I started with on the left. You have to go all the way back to where you came in order to have one period. 
okay? So you have to have one complete cycle, one complete oscillation, which is what I said over here, one oscillation. This is one oscillation. So I cut it off right there and I say the distance between here and here is one period. So this is, a, this is a time axis here. So if this were, you know, let's call it, let's say this is one second, this time from here to here. If, it, if I was marking it off and actually had a scale here, if it were one second, I would say that the period of this oscillation, the period, which is the time it takes for one oscillation to happen, this time would be one second because that's exactly where I came back to. It took one second to do that, okay? And then if I wanted to, to, to graphically show where the amplitude was, the amplitude is the, let's read the definition again, how far in meters from the maximum, um, the maximum displacement from the rest position. This is the rest position here, this, this, uh, uh, this zero point right here. Up here is, uh, is one side and up down here is on the other side of the rest position. So this guy right here, the literal distance from here to here would be the amplitude A. We call the amplitude A is usually how you write it down when you write an equation or something, you put the letter A there. So this literal distance here, which let's say in this case we put 0 0.5, that's as far as I pulled it back, 0 0.5 meters, we would say that's the amplitude. So if I were gonna, gonna draw this thing and label some things, this distance would be the amplitude from the axis up to the very top of the motion, and the distance in time for one period, one period would be one complete cycle of the wave, and I would just look at the scale and I would read the time off. 